Hey there, my name is Julie Faithan Balzer, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this humble book page into an absolutely amazing Eiffel Tower ring holder. Now, don't worry about ripping the pages out of the book because we are going to make them into art and it's going to be absolutely fabulous. So, I'm just going to take an old book and just need a couple pages out of it. And then I have an old transparency that I'm not using. It can have print on it, it can be totally plain, whatever it is. This is just something to make the paper really rigid for when we build out our um, Eiffel Tower. And I'm just going to use some wet adhesive here and I'm pouring it on and I'm just using an old room key or a credit card to smooth it on. I want a nice smooth even layer and I just do part of it. I'm not going to do the whole thing and that's so the glue doesn't dry. Go ahead and put my book page down and I want to make sure that I put a layer of glue on top of this because we want this to be a very hardy thing that's going to stand up. So we're essentially sealing the paper in and I'm using this um, credit card or room key just to smooth out any wrinkles. So when I'm ready to move on to the next one, I can go ahead and I can add more wet adhesive as I need to. Okay. And then I can go ahead and I can just put down the next page and I do want to overlap them slightly so that there's none of the transparency showing. And I'm just going to keep going in this manner until the entire transparency is covered. And if you need to go off the edges, feel free to. Once it's dry, you can cut anything off. So if I wanted, I could just rip this and I can place it down here and it's hanging over the edge, but it's not a big deal because I'll just go ahead and cut that off when it's dry. And speaking of drying, this is going to need to dry once you've covered the whole thing overnight. It has to dry a full 24 hours. And I have one here, which you can see is completely dry and ready to go. It looks fantastic. Book pages are everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that onto my middle tack mat. And then I'm ready to open the dust cover of my machine and I'm just going to load it into the machine, remembering to put two hands right up front. Then from the home screen, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose pattern and we're going to go into the various shapes. We're going to choose this one that looks like a house and a clock. And then you can see there's an Eiffel Tower here, which is perfect. That's just what we want. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, that's the one that we want. Okay. And we're going to say set and then we're going to hit save. And we're going to save it to Scan and Cut Canvas so that it'll go over to the computer and we're going to edit our file there. So I'm going to save it to Scan and Cut Canvas. And now we are ready to head on over to the computer. So I'm here at the computer and I'm at Scan and Cut Canvas and we're going to get going and make our awesome file. So here we are and I'm going to click on the My Projects tab and you can see here's the Eiffel Tower that we sent over. So I want to go ahead and edit it. So the very first thing when it comes up that I want to do is I want to make it the correct size. So I'm going to click on this little icon up here, the properties tab. It's going to come down and basically I want it to change the height. I'm going to do it about maybe five and a half seems about right for this. That's about the right size. Okay. Now the other thing that's important to notice is if I go up to edit and I say ungroup, You'll see, if you see the little blue lines here, that this is actually made up of three separate pieces. And I really just want it to be one piece instead of three separate pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those pieces once I've separated them, okay? And I'm going to go to the process overlap, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the divide panel, okay? So now what I should have is I should have one piece that has these holes missing from it and two other pieces here, which I'm going to go ahead and just hit the delete key after I've selected them. So now I have a solid piece here, which is exactly what I want. Now I want to go ahead and add some little tabs so that our four Eiffel Towers that we're going to create are going to hang together when we create a dimensional Eiffel Tower. If this sounds confusing, don't worry. Just watch with me and you will see how easy it is to make your very own dimensional Eiffel Tower. Okay, so we're going to go ahead over to the basic shapes and this sort of rectangle shape already looks like a tab to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of those and I need to make it a lot smaller to make it a tab. You can see that right here, right? And the other thing I need to do is I need to rotate it. So again, the properties panel should be open. If it's not open, all you need to do is click on that box and it will open. And then I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So I just type that in 90 degrees, hit the return key and boom, it has rotated for me 90 degrees. So I want my Eiffel Tower to be able to hang together 
just in this area. Now, one of the things that's really important is I need to make sure that both of these edges right here, these two edges overlap, okay? So you can also click on it and use the arrow key to nudge it over if you need to, to make sure that it overlaps, okay? And that's creating the tab. Then I wanna create a second tab down at the bottom that's more of a square. So I'm gonna go over to the basic shapes, grab a square, and again, just by dragging the corner, I'm gonna make that a nice small square so that it doesn't overlap anything too much. I could probably make that just a skosh bigger, maybe even a little bit taller, more like a rectangle. There you go. And then I use the arrow keys again to bump it over, making sure that at least these two sides completely touch. Okay. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all three parts. I've made my tabs. I'm going to go over to edit and I'm gonna choose process overlap and I'm gonna use the weld function. And now this is gonna weld those tabs on there. So this is all now one happy piece. Okay, so there's one more step that we have to do. There's actually a couple more steps, but one more step with this one piece. I'm gonna go right up here to the path tool. It looks like lines with little dots. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click in the corner right where that tab meets in, and then I'm gonna double click in the opposite corner where it ends, click, click, and that will end the path. Then you'll see the properties panel sh should open. If it doesn't, again, just go ahead and click on it to make sure it opens. And I'm gonna go to dash pattern and I'm gonna choose a perforated line because I wanna perforate that little edge so that the tab is going to move. And I'm gonna repeat that same process with the other tab that we chose. I'm just gonna click in the corner and then I'm gonna double click in the opposite corner and then again, I'm gonna choose a dash pattern to create a perforation line. Now what I need to do, because these are all separate pieces, you can see the three different boxes that come up. I wanna go ahead up to the edit menu and I wanna group them. So now this is just one blue box, it's all together. So now what I want is I want to duplicate this, okay? So up under edit, you can see right here it says duplicate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it. I wanna duplicate it again. So I'm gonna go edit, duplicate, and one more time because we need four pieces to make our Eiffel Tower. So now we have the four pieces, but now we need to rotate them. So one of them is going to rotate 90 degrees. No problem, that's done, okay? One of them is gonna rotate negative 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna type in negative 90 and it's gonna go the other way. One of them is gonna rotate 180 degrees. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in 180 return and you can see it went around. So now I just need to line these up. So one goes down and one goes up and I wanna make sure they have a slight overlap at the center here. And I also wanna make sure they're perfectly aligned though. So I'm gonna select them both, go up to edit and I'm going to align them. Okay, now that's bringing them slightly off center because they have the tabs on them. So instead I'm gonna go ahead and use my arrow keys and just visually see that they're overlapping and that they're lined up. And when that's good, I'm gonna select them both, okay? And I'm not actually gonna weld them at this point. I wanna put the other ones in before I do that. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, which is I'm gonna bring this guy down and make sure he's aligned in there. Bring the next one down and align it in there as well, okay? So now I'm sure that they're all aligned. The problem is if I weld it now, what will happen is all these perforation lines will sort of disappear. And I'm gonna show you what I mean because I'm gonna be able to undo it. So I'll show you what happens. If I weld this now, uh, the perforation lines disappeared, which is not what we wanted. So let me hit Command Z or undo to undo that. So what I actually need to do is first, I need to ungroup everything, okay? And I need to individually do that. So I'm gonna click on each one and do edit, ungroup, click on the next one, edit, ungroup, click on the next one. A lot of things here, once you get the workflow of Scan and Cut Canvas, it makes it really easy to get done whatever it is that you need to get done. So once I have everything ungrouped, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select only the four pieces. So if I just select in the center area, I'm gonna get the four pieces, but not the perforation lines. Then I can go up to edit and weld, and you see I still have my perforation lines. So now I'm ready to reselect everything Go up to edit and group, and now everything is one big happy family, and this file is ready to go ahead. I'm gonna download it, 
and I am gonna send it wirelessly on over to my scanning cut because we are ready to get a cutting. Let's go. So I'm gonna to go to pattern and I'm gonna click the wireless button and that is gonna send the file that we just built over and I can see it right here on my screen ready to go. So I've already done a test cut so I know how this is gonna cut but you of course should do a test cut on your machine to make sure that you know the correct settings. So once you're ready, you're just gonna go ahead and press the start button. finished cutting I'm just gonna go ahead and unload the mat and then I can peel away the excess here let's see crack 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 and once that's done I can go ahead and give it a pull um, I'm gonna take my spatula tool and I'm gonna go ahead and bend the mat and just get under there because I don't want to rip or tear anything here I want to make sure that it comes off really nicely and easily. And then once this is off the mat, we are gonna be ready to assemble it into our amazing Eiffel Tower ring holder. So now I'm gonna do a couple folds. So you'll remember the perforation lines that we made. So I'm gonna fold it on each of those little perforation lines right here like so. I'm just gonna keep folding it on those perforation lines. And then although we didn't create any perforation lines at the top, these pieces are so small that you should be able to fold it just at the intersections where they meet. So you create kind of a square at the top as you fold these in. And you can see that you can create each of those little bits. And now you can start to see our Eiffel Tower taking shape here, looking pretty cool. So what I need to do now is essentially I need to glue each of these tabs on. So I'm just gonna use my favorite wet adhesive and I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit to each of the tabs. And I just like to do two tabs at a time. I find it a little bit easier to manage that way. Um, but I just go ahead and fold them on so that they're sort of matching up the pieces. And it can be a little bit fussy to get this done, but you know, when you, if you glue it correctly, you'll have a fabulous result every single time. So I'm just gonna mush those on there. And again, with wet adhesive, you need to hold it for a couple seconds. So I'm gonna do that with all four tabs. So now that my Eiffel Tower is all together and dry, I can go ahead and I can take my rings and I can just put them on and I have the cutest little ring stand for all of my little trinkets, simple and easy. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. And of course, don't forget about the Scan and Cut website at scanandcut.com.